What is going on guys, I am Miguel from ecgym.com bringing you the 6th or 7th episode of the Muscle Anatomy series and this episode we're discussing the abdominal slash obliques. Now I'm pairing these two together because they work so well together and they're really not that hard to um, get a grasp of. So I did a pretty mediocre drawing of the abdominals. So this is going to be the abdominals if I'm facing you. Okay, so there are pretty much three or four layers of the abdominal wall. Um, so I am, when I'm saying abdominal wall, I'm including the obliques, okay? So the obliques are, as we all know, the muscles on our side, and then the abdominals or the abs are the muscles on the front of our torso around the stomach. Now the name sort of describes where the fibers run of the muscle, and from there you should know what their function is and what direction the muscles go. So we're going to start off with the obliques, the muscles on your side. So we have the external oblique and then the internal oblique. So there are two layers of obliques. The external ones are the ones that we see pretty well if we're lean or we have a large amount of muscle um, in the oblique area. So the external obliques. Oblique means at an angle or at a slant. And these lines are the muscle. And then the white empty space is going to be fascia or connective tissue or tendons or anything that isn't really muscle, but more so connective tissue. So these are, this is the muscle. It's extending from the front of your body towards the back of your body. So since the muscles are running at an angle, you can see that their function would be to move your body at an angle, pretty much in a crossing over motion, and also helps your body turn side to side. And then beneath the external obliques, as you would imagine, we have the internal obliques, whose fibers run in a transverse direction, meaning sideways, so they differ from the um, externals, but they are similar in their function in that they help um, balance the body and they help it rotate. And then for the abdominals, we have the uh, rectus abdominis and transverse abdominis. Now the rectus abdominis is the one that we refer to as a six pack or the legendary eight pack, which everyone has unless, well, they, everyone has it, but it's only visible if you're really lean or you have a large amount of mass in your, in your um, abs. And you will see them. So there is an 8-pack, and for the rectus abdominis, the muscle fibers run straight up and down. Now the rectus means straight or in a line or following a straight path. So since the fibers run up and down, as you would imagine, it brings your body sort of in a folding chair sort of motion where it closes your body. So next we have the transverse abdominis. You know, like I said, transverse means running sideways. So beneath the rectus abdominis. Here's a little cutout, and beneath your six pack, we have the transverse abdominis, which our muscle fibers are run side to side, as opposed to up and down. So these, um, this layer of the abdominals helps your body go sideways as well, transverse sideways. So now for the origin and insertion. Now each muscle group has its own different origin and insertion. So you can see it's pretty uh, detailed as to where they originate and insert, but I tried to simplify it as much as I could. So for the rectus abdominis, the first layer of abs, um, it originates on the pubic crest slash pubic symphysis. So it originates way down here in your uh, pelvic area, near the groin, that's where it originates. And it inserts into your ribs slash your xiphoid process. So your ribs would be up here, and then the xiphoid process is a small bone beneath your sternum, right around here. So it inserts into that, so that would tell you that it, like I said, it brings your body down or crunches it into sort of a folding chair position. So since it originates down here and inserts up here, it brings the upper body down. So if you're going to do any ab work or exercises for your abs, um, ideally you want to bring your torso down, but you can also bring your limbs up or your lower legs up and do the same crunching motion. Now for the transverse abdominis, the sort of deepest layer of abs, um, it originates in the costals. And the costals is just another word for ribs, um, lumbar fascia slash ilium. So it originates up here um, in your ribs and your lumbar and your um, ilium. So your iliac crest or the wings of your pubis or your pubic bones. And it sort of originates all around your midsection essentially. And that's pretty much a given being that the muscle fibers run um, horizontally, so it has to insert in multiple places to hook onto something. So 
It inserts into your rectus sheath. Now the rectus sheath is a sort of layer of connective tissue covering your entire abdominal wall. Okay, so this sheath is where um, the, the transverse abdominus inserts into and it originates pretty much at your sides. So what this tells you is that it starts or it allows you to do that sort of twisting motion and going side to side. And it is kind of confusing as to why it originates in so many places, but it kind of it gives you an idea of how large the muscle is. It is deep to the entire abdominal wall, so you can get a pretty good idea of how large this muscle is, along with your uh, rectus abdominis. So it is pretty large. And next we have the external oblique, and it originates in the lower eight ribs, so all the way up here in your lower uh, ribs, and it inserts into the iliac crest, which is the wing or the uh, butterfly thing of your hip bone. And then the internal oblique originates on the lumbar fascia and the ilium. So the lumbar is, if you don't know, your lower back essentially. And the fascia is the connective tissue or protective layer of the muscle on top of the lower back muscle. And it inserts into the costal margin slash rectus sheath. So it inserts into the costals pretty much in the lower rib area and also into the, where else, the rectus sheath, like I said the sort of connective tissue on the abdominals. Now, a lot of people don't know that this space between the six pack or the eight pack, there are actually tendons that are separating these little blocks of muscle. And this just sort of um, creates a consist consistency or it kind of breaks up the muscle. So it allows it to have a greater range of motion. So as opposed to having just large uh, bands of muscle fibers running from your ribs all the way down to your um, hip, it sort of breaks it up and allows for a greater amount of mobility. It gives it a little slack and um, you know, space to breathe, essentially. Now for the functions, there are multiple functions for these uh, four muscles. Um, for the rectus abdominis, it flexes the trunk, and trunk, uh, trunk flexion is, like I said, doing a crunching motion or bringing your torso down to your hips or down to your knees. That's um, torso uh, flexion or trunk flexion. And it also helps with um, raising intra-abdominal pressure. Now, if you don't know what intra-abdominal pressure is, it's just pressure that you try to build up in your um, abdominal cavity in order to help keep your back neutral or keep your back straight. So if you're doing a lot of squatting or deadlifting or many compound movements, um, creating abdominal pressure is really important because it helps um, pre place pressure against your abs and your lower back in order to keep your spine neutral. Um, as you should know, if you're keeping your spine neutral in pretty much every single exercise that's um, a compound movement or a pretty heavy exercise, you're you know asking for an injury. So intra-abdominal pressure is very important. Um, I'll probably cover that at another time, but just know that the abs, all the muscles in the abs, help with creating intra-abdominal pressure. And um, also, that's actually a reason why people wear weightlifting belts in order to help them build um, abdominal pressure. If they can't do it on their own, it gives their stomach something to press up against on in order to keep their back straight. So that's what a belt is for, or a weightlifting belt. Now for the transverse abdominis, um, it supports the abdominal wall and also helps with uh, intra-abdominal pressure and it helps moving the body side to side. So like I said, since the fibers of the transverse abdominis run horizontally, it helps move the torso in a side to side motion. Um, it also helps create intra-abdominal pressure and it supports the abdominal wall. So since it is beneath the rectus abdominis or the six pack, it does help create more support and stability. And it's also one of the key players in helping with digestion. Um, if you didn't know, your digestive organs, they don't have you know, enough power to push food along the, the colon or the small intestine or the uh, stomach all on its own. So the transverse abdominis kind of helps with that motion of pushing food along and helping it get on its way to, you know, be fully digested. And then next we have the external oblique. Um, it helps support the ab wall. It abducts and rotates the trunk. So if you don't know what ab or trunk abduction is, it's pretty much bending your body, you know, side to side at the oblique. Now, a lot of people don't know how to probably do like side raises for the obliques. They tend to just go down and then stop when the torso is upright. But that's not really a full contraction for the oblique that you're trying to work. To get a full um, trunk abduction, you're going to go down and then squeeze your oblique on the other side. So as opposed to just stopping when you're upright, keep going past you know the straight margin 
and then squeeze your oblique. A lot of people don't do that and they just focus on carrying heavy weight and just uh, not yielding any results and just wasting your time, so, so that's one thing you should know. And then finally, the internal oblique. You can see I just drew lines because um, it's pretty much the same thing as the external oblique where it does all these side-to-side -side motions, it helps with um, trunk abduction, and things like that. So now for the exercises, um, compound and isolation, as I always do. For compound, we have ab rollers slash ab rollouts, landmine 180s, and bicycle crunches. And then for isolation, we have side bends, planks, and leg raises. Now for the compounds and isolations, they're pretty much the same thing. You can't necessarily isolate the abs. There's like one or two exercises that are uh, really good isolation exercises, but um, since you are, or since the hip flexors carry on a similar motion as the abdominals, the rectus abdominis, um, they do work together when you're doing a lot of ab exercises. So like when you're doing hanging knee raises, since you are raising your knees, you're not only working your abs, but you're also working your hip flexors. But since the abs are the weaker muscle, um, you are getting more work out of them. But nonetheless, you can't really isolate the abs as much as you'd like to. So for the ab roller, you can use one of these things, which if you tried it before, pretty hard to use. Or you can use a barbell uh, with weights or plates on it, and you're just gonna grab the bar and roll it out the same way you would if you wouldn't have an ab wheel. Uh, for the landmine 180s, these are an exercise where you require a barbell. And what you're gonna do is pretty much put a barbell into a corner, grab it, put a weight on it, and you're gonna move like this, side to side. And it's a pretty challenging exercise because you need good grip strength, and you need to be able to have like the shoulder endurance and arm endurance to be able to hold on to the bar when it's at this uh, level, and then we're bringing it down to the other side. And then for the bicycle crunches, uh, it's pretty much as the name entails, you're gonna lay on your back and pretend you're you know, pedaling a bicycle. And at the same time, you're gonna try to touch your opposing elbow to the opposing knee and do that sort of motion and with all of these exercises the main key to getting a effective workout is to breathe out with every single repetition so once you're nearing the top of the repetition and you're squeezing the abs you have to exhale now a lot of people don't do this they just hold their breath and keep going but once you try this where once you're at the top of the motion or when you're nearing the top you're going to exhale and squeeze your abs as hard as you can because your abs do help slightly with um, your breathing or forced um, expiration so if you don't so your your breathing comes through the usage of your diaphragm muscle your diaphragm separates the um, thoracic cavity from the abdominal cavity now when you breathe in uh, your diaphragm is being depressed when you breathe out your diaphragm is going up forcing your lungs to exhale now once you're doing a crunch and you're going to exhale, your abs are squeezing, okay? Now once they squeeze, they're forcing your organs to be more compact. Now this is going to force your diaphragm to move up just a little bit and help you exhale through your lungs. So once you're doing a forced um, expiration or forced exhale, once you're contracting your abs and you exhale, you're getting an even deeper contraction through your abs. So your diaphragm works with your abs if you're doing a forced um, inhalation or extra exhalation. So just keep in mind, if you're gonna do a crunch or any ab exercise, once you're nearing the top of the movement, exhale, you're gonna get a very, very good contraction through your abs, and you're gonna get even better results than you were before if you're just holding your breath or not breathing properly through doing the exercise. And then for the isolations, the side bends, I explained them earlier through doing uh, side raises, where instead of just stopping you know, at this uh, full straight position, keep going past, um, uh, I guess, 180 degrees, and then contract your obliques. Now, a good tip is to put your fingers on the obliques you're working, and then feel them contracting. Now, this is gonna really help you get an idea of how your obliques are working, and it's gonna help you understand how to get a better uh, contraction. And then for the plank, um, this exercise is kind of difficult if you have sort of a weak lumbar or your trunk is um, not that strong. So plank, if you've never done, done it before, you pretty much get in push-up position and then drop onto your elbows instead of your hands and just hold that position as long as you can. Now the trick is keeping your torso all the way straight um, in a line with your legs, okay? So with this, you're working your abs in order to contract 
your stomach and keep it keep your body straight and you're also working on your lower back strength in order to keep it straight as well and then for leg raises as i explained earlier your hip flexors come into play when doing these but um it is more so a ab exercise and when doing these um try to bring your knees as high as you can and like i said exhale with every repetition and you're gonna get a better contraction and then for injuries there are only two main injuries you can get and there's a strain and a hernia so like i said way before a strain relates to the tendons and muscle so this can happen through doing a very uh, rapid movement or something too stressful for your abs to handle and you can get sort of a um, a small tear in a tendon or uh, a pull a muscle or that kind of thing and then for the hernia if you create too much um, intra-abdominal pressure um, the pressure is going to find a way to get out so if you're holding your breath and you're not letting any of the air out the largest or the easiest place for the pressure to be let out of is your belly button now i'm not saying that your stomach's going to explode to let the pressure out but it is going to pop um, or cause a small tear in your abdominal wall or abdominal lining and create a small you know, pocket of flesh hanging out of your stomach now this is treated surgically and you can't really do uh, like fix it on your own so you have to get it treated surgically but nevertheless you can have a hernia if you hold your breath too much or have too much intra-abdominal pressure and the pressure is trying to find somewhere to escape so that's pretty much it for the abdominal video it's over 15 minutes but it is uh, packed with good information if I do say so myself and um, yeah so remember there's four uh, abdominal muscles including obliques there's the external oblique, internal oblique, rectus abdominis, and transverse abdominis. So, yeah. So if you want to see more things like this, head on over to ucgym.com and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Yesterday, you said tomorrow. So just do it! Make your dreams come true! Just do it!